Greetings, I'm the Bulgarian Trocodyte. Today I'm gonna talk about my favorite albums of the 2010s. There will be two videos for this topic, as there are quite a few albums that I love from the 2010s. So I figured the video might be too long if I talked about all of them in a single video. So in this part one, we have 20 albums. And I'm not sure how many there will be the second part, but, but there will probably be actually more than 20 albums on the second part. Yeah. And these aren't ranked in order. My original plan was that I would do like ranked videos for all the decades, but then I realized that I'm just so awful at ranking albums that I just cannot do it. I tried it, but I just couldn't do it. So I decided that I'm gonna just have this in random order. Although today we have these in alphabetical order, ordered uh, alphabetical order for the artists, not for the album names. Yeah. But anyway, let's start and let me know some of your favorite albums of the 2010s as well, or what do you think of any of these albums that I will talk about here today. We have everything from metal to hip hop to pop music, so lots of different stuff. But first we have an album called Meta by a band called Garbomb, which is this really crazy, extremely heavy metalcore band. They are kind of like a mix of Meshuga and Dillinger Escape Plan. They have those downtuned, chant sounding guitars, and then they constantly have these tempo changes in the songs, so you have the songs uh, sound kind of all over the place as they constantly change tempo. But that's really fun to me, and it feels like a weird roller roller coaster ride or something when you go through these different tempos and stuff. So it's a really fun, but also quite like exhaustive album to listen to as it is so rhythmically complex and heavy and pounding all the way through. But yeah, really, really good album, but I wouldn't recommend this to people who have no um, knowledge of these genres as it is quite hard to get to get uh, get into if you don't have any experience. Yeah. Then we have two albums from Danny Brown. So we have Triple X and Atrocity Exhibition. And this one we talked about in the podcast. I think it was one of our best album discussions so far. We went quite in depth with the album, I think. But I love both of these albums a lot. Again, they have great beats that really stand out from the crowd. I love Danny Brown's crazy rapping style, his weird voice that he does. And both of these albums are full of like great, great songs. And it would be really hard for me to pick which one I prefer, but I think Atrocity Exhibition is probably slightly better and maybe a bit more ambitious and unique. But I mean, both of them are very unique and I think five star albums, but I think if I had to choose, I probably would choose Atrocity Exhibition in the end. But yeah, these are both among my absolute favorite hip hop albums. They would be my hip hop top five. Definitely. Yeah, really love Danny Brown. Then we already mentioned the Dillinger Escape Plan briefly, but this is their final album before they retired, so it's Dissociation from 2016. Although I think now the band is touring again, so I'm not sure whether they will also come back to making music, but at least they are doing some touring now, which is of course very cool. But this is kind of like a culmination of their craft. It sounds like the previous albums, but just a bit more modern. But they always kind of change their sound a little bit. It always sounds like Dillinger Escape Land, but then they just add these again okay, small flourishes that are a bit different. And this album, just like many of their albums, is a mix of softer sounds, those kind of softer, catchy songs with like lots of singing instead of screaming. But then we also have the crazy dissonant 
songs full of blast beats and stuff. So it does both sides really well. And I really love the dynamics of the album and the production sounds really good as well. And it's just such a great album front to back. Very enjoyable to listen to. And there aren't any weak tracks in my opinion. I definitely one of their best albums. I like all of their albums, but this is again one of my favorites. Yeah. Then we have two FK8 Wix albums. We have LP1 and then Magdalene. And she's gonna drop a new album early next year, and I'm just dying to hear that. She released a single from it already, and I really love that new song, so I have really high expectations for the new album. But anyway, these first two albums of hers are just absolutely incredible. Some of the best art pop, pop of the decade, and also I would say all time. You can hear some of the influences, like again, probably Björk and Kate Bush, and then some R&B stuff, but it also sounds very fresh, very modern. We have this very kind of spacey beats. There's lots of the beats like breathe a lot. They aren't too intense, but they, at the same time, they sound kind of intimate, but also very huge at the same time, a very expansive. And she has such a wide ranging voice. She likes, she likes to play with her voice and do these kind of weird techniques with her voice and absolutely love her voice and all of the different elements of it. Yeah. And these, both of these albums are just full of great, great songs. And again, both of these albums also work really well front to back. There aren't any weak songs in either of these albums, I would say. Yeah. Incredible albums. Yeah. And I think these will probably stand the test of time really well as well. Well, at first I thought that I would I prefer LP1, but now I might prefer Magdalene a little bit, but it's hard to say. I think both of them are just perfect art pop albums. So yeah, and hopefully the next one will be five star album as well. I kind of feel like it will be really good. Yeah. This one we talked about on the podcast as well. It's Pinata by Freddie Gibbs and Madlib. So Madlib, a famous producer who worked with MF Doom, for example, and Freddie Gibbs, a great rapper, and their styles work really well together. Freddie Gibbs has a great flow and it really fits Matt Lips production. And Matt Lips production here is both kind of classic but also forward looking at the same time. So I think it, it it's an album that both kind of newer hip hop fans but also the classic hip hop fans can enjoy. And it's a bit of a longer album, around an hour long, I think, but it doesn't get boring at any point, and there is a nice variety in the songs as well, and nice dynamics, yeah. But everything just works really, really well here, yeah. Great album. Then we have a Finnish melodic death metal band, one of the more acclaimed and popular melodic death metal bands from Finland, so it's Insomnium. And their album Winter's Gate. And they based this album on the short story written by the singer and the bassist. And so it has a concept, the whole album, and it has a story. And it's actually kind of like a one long 40 minute track, even though it's divided into different parts. When you look at it in the streaming services, for example, seven different parts, but at the same time, it's meant to be like a one long composition and it works really well as that i like all the different parts but especially the first four i would say are my favorites and you see some different styles here some of the songs sound a bit more like black metal ish not like full-on black metal but more like black end melodic death metal i get i guess then it has that um edge of sanity Crimson type of vibe here as well, because that was a big influence as well. It has really nice production, I think, by Dan Svano. I mean, he tends to do really great production. 
there are some acoustic parks here so lots of dynamics and it feels like a epic journey when you listen to it front to back yeah and to me among the very best melodic death metal albums of all time i tend to prefer just death metal and also like technical death metal different death metal to melodic death metal but melodic death metal is something i have lots of nostalgia for as i listen to it a lot as a git and i think it's one of the more popular styles styles of metal in my country of finland as well but yeah great stuff then, well, this doesn't really need an introduction. It's probably the most famous album of the 2010s, I guess. So it's The Beep of Butterfly from Kendrick Lamar. And stereotypically, it's actually my favorite hip hop album of all time. And it's really funny because I was actually very skeptical when I was listening to it for the first time because I knew that it was so mainstream and I had only heard, heard some of it there hit songs from Kendrick Lamar, so I was thinking that, oh, it's gonna be awful mainstream rap, but then when I listened to the album, I was just blown away, and then the album ke kept getting better and better each time I listened to it, and now it's my favorite hip-hop album of all time, and I have lots of hip-hop album favorites, I love the genre, and many different forms of hip-hop, and, and I would also rank this very high, on my like all-time favorite albums least probably in the top 25 around that range i would say yeah it's just an incredible album full of great tracks like how much a dollar cost and blacker than berries my favorite Kendrick song in the album but also overall i just love the aggression of that and the kind of simple classic beat and the lyrics are really great and the lyrics are great in the whole album i love the chassis production here and everything it's just absolute perfection incredible album and deserves all the hype yeah then we have dynamaku by kiku ohana this we also talked about on the podcast this is such a beautiful varied album going from like hard pop to crazy dubstep and other electronic sounds uh, it has some industrial sounds and some of that neoclassical dark wave, like it says here. It has some of the most beautiful female vocals I've ever heard. She has such a great range and very emotional voice. And even though I don't understand the lyrics, like I feel like I can kind of get from the sound of her voice what she's saying. And that was the case with my favorite song of this album, Hito Kavari, which I've talked about many times on my channel as it is a very personal and relatable song for me and I, it's one of my favorite songs of all time probably in my top 10 as it, is, as, it, as it just touches me so deeply and it kind of gives me like a voice it feels like one of those songs that it kind of describes how I feel inside of them so I, it's just such, such an important song to me this one I also always have to listen to on YouTube, unfortunately, because it's not on Tidal, but it's on Apple Music and Spotify. So if you have any of those streaming services, you can listen to it. And again, incredible production. It has this kind of carnival horror, horror like ghost type of sound to it, which is fun. And yeah, this is such a great album. And glad that it's fairly highly rated here in Radio Music. And I think if more and more people discover it i think it will keep this high rating and maybe it will get even higher yeah i think many people would like this album yeah great stuff then we have three albums from kinoko teikoku one of my favorite indie rock shoegaze bands so we have utsu ninaru their first album then their second album eureka then as the say in the same year as Eureka, they did this EP called Long Goodbye. But they have this amazing female vocalist who has such a great and soothing voice, decent range as well. And all of these albums are so dreamy. It definitely leans more towards that kind of indie rock side of shoegaze, like I said. So much some of the songs don't really sound full on shoegaze but more like indie rock with kind of a dreamy vibe but then there are those kind of full on shoegaze songs as well 
All the vocals are mixed in a way that it doesn't sound like your average shoegaze. The vocals are, again, a bit more maybe the front of the mix because in shoegaze, obviously, they go for that wall of sound that it kind of blends together so you don't have that as much in all of these songs. But other than that, it has that dreamy shoegaze vibe. And yeah, again, some of the songs Again, she does this kind of more like almost like spoken vocals, but again, she sings a little bit, so it doesn't sound like full on spoken. But then sometimes she does this really high, beautiful vocals that I absolutely love, and you just want to close your eyes and vibe to it when you hear them. And these also have like very melancholic vibes to them. Yeah, oh, these are so good. And you recovers how I discovered them. And I think this might be their best album, or maybe most varied album, but I think these days Utsuni Naru is maybe the one that I like the most and I listen to the most. Yeah. And also there are other albums that we don't have here are really good. Yeah. And this EP is really, really good. Again, it's very similar sound as the other two. And then after these three, they kind of change their sound to be maybe a bit more mainstream. But it's still, again, their sound keeps on being really good after this. And also, we sent to one of the solo albums from the singer. I think her name is Chiaki Sato or something like that. And yeah, that solo album was pretty decent as well, but not as good as this, this stuff. But if you like shoegaze, indie rock, dream pop, that type of stuff, definitely check this out. Then we have Global Gags, Le Tuil, Trasique. So this is a French Canadian again, art pop, chamber pop artist. She actually has a new album coming out very soon before the end of the year. So I'm extremely, extremely hyped for that as her two albums, this one and the ne next one that you have here, Notre Dame de Sept de Leur. Uh, so these two are some of my absolute favorite albums. So I'm hoping that the next one will be as good. But this has lots of the kind of classic chamber pop sounds that you are kind of expected to expect to listen to when you listen to chamber pop. But it also has these kind of modern art pop sounds in top of it. But these are very, this is a very lush sounding album and a very varied album. Some of them songs go for that's just lush beauty chamber pop stuff, and some of them are just more catchy pop songs. And both sides work really well and she has such a beautiful voice and she really goes all out with the orchestrations here there are lots of layers here that are just so beautiful yeah absolutely love this album and the next album as well yeah but that's from 2020 so we are not gonna talk about that here then we have paramore's paramore my favorite album from paramore i've heard all of their Albums, but this is my favorite. This doesn't have as much that kind of pop punk sound, but it goes more of just full on pop. Uh, some of them songs here sound like that kind of classic maximalist pop music that goes even to the 80s and stuff a little bit. But it's of course the sound is modernized and stuff, but you can really hear that some of the classic influences there. It's a fairly long album, long, lots of songs here. But it works really well. Front to back, love Haley's vocals, and the songwriting here is just so so good. These are great kind of sing along songs here, very anthemic at times. I would say for the most part, again they're very energetic and they give you this good good mood. And the lyrics are pretty basic stuff for this type of music. Not, not there's not much to mention. They're incredibly well produced album as well. It sounds really good sonically. But yeah, such a fun album to listen to. And I think this is one that is very accessible. And a lot of people could like this one if you haven't heard it already, because of course Beramore is very famous. So yeah. Then we have Protest the Hero Volition. So Protest the Hero is this very unique sounding metal band. They have their roots in kind of a hardcore punk, so it has that punk energy and also lots of political rebellious 
lyrics, but then it has this very technical, very fast metal instrumentation. Their instrumentation, again, the guitar players and stuff, they sound, have very unique sound. It's really hard to compare Protest the Hero to any other band because they just have their own sound. We have these very high tempo songs, and again, okay, the guitars are going all over the fretboard with crazy lead playing. There aren't many like actual solos, but there's lots of kind of lead layers to many of the crazy um, riffs that are really fast. Yeah. And if you look at people like, for example, doing guitar covers of the songs, like it's just absolutely insane. I love watching that. Yeah. But I've been a fan of this album for over six years now, and I still love to listen to it. The vocals are these very, again, high tenor vocals. They can put some people off, and there's some screams here and there, and also this female vocalist that comes on a couple of the songs. Yeah. But really fun, fast-paced music, but probably sounds very overwhelming to an average listener. But maybe it would be easier to get into than many of my other metal favorites because again it doesn't have many screaming vocals and you can hear what he's singing and stuff but and he his voice also sounds very theatrical so some people might like that but yeah and this could be a, maybe a good gateway into metal if you've listened to like decent amounts of like punk music and post hardcore and things like that yeah then we have radio heads a moon shaped pool a masterpiece. And of course, this is a very highly rated album, but I would say that this may be slightly underrated in their own discography. Because of course, everybody talks about OK Computer, Kit A, and In Rainbows, but I think this is as good as any of those three albums. And this actually was kind of what the album from Radiohead that blew me away first. And I had listened to a couple of the others before this, and I liked them a lot. But it took me a while to f fall in love with those albums, but this was kind of love at first sight, this album. Great, again, art pop production here, lots of layers, it just sounds sonically so beautiful, like all of their albums pretty much, and Tom York's voice, even though he's obviously quite a bit older here than in OK Computer, for example, but he still sounds so great, and this has this album is just full of great songs and it has True Love Waits, which is of course an older song of theirs, but they recorded it for this album and that's in the conversation for being my favorite Radiohead song. It's definitely in the top three with All I Need and uh, Paranoid Android, but yeah, I love that song. But yeah, such a great album and I love this abstract art cover as well. Then we go back to hip hop. So we have Run the Jewels, which is this project from ELP and Killer Mike. And ELP does the beats. He's a great producer. And then Killer Mike does the rapping, but ELP also raps a lot here. But I like Killer Mike more as a rapper than ELP, even though I like ELP as well. But Killer Mike just has that kind of voice that it's just perfect for rapping. There's just so much power in his rapping and he has such a great flow as well but ELP's beats here are just incredible very bouncy aggressive and huge sounding kind of maximalist and I love those types of beats that he does in all the Run the Jewels albums I've heard all of their albums but this is my favorite lots of great songs here I don't dislike any of the songs it just flows really nicely and it's just such a fun fun listen yeah, great stuff. Then we have Incurso by Spawn of Possession, a Swedish technical death metal band. And this is one of the kind of wankier side of technical death metal. So it's all about noodling and it sounds almost like classical music, but in metal, when it's just, it's just so fast and intense and noodly, like I said. So this is something that would put most people off because most people don't like intense guitar solos and stuff. Again, people say less is more, but this is more is more type of music. And I'm into more is more type of music, like Yngwie Malmsteen would say. Yeah. But it's such a fun and intense 
listen. I don't listen to this type of technical death metal as much as anymore as I used to. These days I often go for the kind of dissonant stuff that's rhythmically complex, but doesn't always do the noodling stuff, even though I still enjoy the noodling sound. But, but yeah, this is one of the best tech death albums of this kind, definitely. And yeah, the other spawn possession albums are really good as well. And hopefully they will come back someday in the future. It's really crazy stuff. Then we have Titanic Rising by VS Blood. Again, a really, really good art pop album. My favorite song here is called Movies, which is a, such a beautiful song. And it has that kind of Baroque vibe here, like it says here, and that kind of gives it very much of a classic sound, but it also sounds very new, and her voice sounds like very current as well. And I also like the album that she did after this, which you see here, and In the Darkness. But this one is just like the culmination of her career so far. To me, everything just works here. Again, the songwriting, the instrumentation, production, her voice, the vocal melodies, everything is just great. And lyrics are quite good as well. Yeah, and it has that kind of wall of sound, type of sound to it, like the movies song that I mentioned, it has that a lot, that very some very hypnotic vibes, lots of lushness and ether, ethereal vibes here. And yeah, it's such a beautiful album. So highly rated here as well. I think the rating has been going up recently. I didn't remember it that it, that it had such a high rating. Yeah. Yeah. But great stuff and a very accessible album. But it's not accessible in the way that it's like overly simplistic because there are lots of interesting sonic layers here, but it's accessible in a way that I think many people would just enjoy listening to it. Yeah. But anyway, those were 20 of my favorite albums from the 2010s. Look out for part two, and I will also try to do the other decades going on backwards. So after the 2010s, we have 2000s, then 90s, 80s. Yeah. We'll probably do this up to the 50s, I guess, or at least the 60s. I have some favorite albums from the 50s, but, but my knowledge of 50s music is way more bare bones than for the other decades, so we'll see about that. But anyway, let's do these other decades first. But I think the 2010s is a really great decade for music, and I love uh, also the current day music of the 2020s, but I also love the classic decades, so yeah, we'll see how this video series develops. But anyway, let me know what you think of any of these albums and maybe you got some recommendations and if you decide to listen to any of these, definitely let me know. Even if you really dislike the albums, I, I'm still, I still want to hear your thoughts. Yeah. But thanks for watching. Don't drink coke at all. Sayonara and arigato gozaimasta.